of all the varying diseases and conditions that we modern humans face. There is a ton of nuance in what's going wrong and where it's happening. One of the many reasons treatment can often be so hit and miss. However, through all of this biological chaos, there seems to be one phenomena suspiciously present in basically every single deteriorating condition, and that is the constant low-dose arousal of the immune system, otherwise classified as chronic inflammation, which would make anything that helps prevent or alleviate this biological phenomena likely good for our vitality ambitions, right? Well, then we have some new fasting data that's worth putting an eye on. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are digging into this across the board disease associated condition of chronic inflammation and what new research tells us about time restricted feedings effects on it. Because whether it's the driver, the byproduct or both, which is probably the most likely scenario, constant inflammation or the continuous signaling and response of the immune system seems to be present in basically every single disease state science has science on heart disease, type 2 diabetes, neurodegeneration, hypertension, liver disease, irritable bowel syndrome, autoimmune conditions, cancer, and all of their nefarious friends have a pathology of heightened immune activity. And this may sound like a good thing, and in some cases it could be, as the immune system is important for battling conditions such as cancer as it grows. But in many other situations, an overactive immune system leads to damage of one's own critical tissue, which, wouldn't you know it, often ends up causing even more inflammation. A vicious cycle indeed. So before we get to time-restricted feedings, biological wand waving, let's spend a minute and double click on this phenomena of chronic inflammation and why it is not cool for biological school. You see, we have this super elaborate internal army of medic warriors, which patrol our body and stand guard at key bodily barriers 24 hours, seven days a week. You may be familiar with them because it's your immune system. And after millions of years of evolution, it has been tuned with this unbelievable ability to delineate between healthy cells, damaged cells, and cells which are straight up foreign. And one of the ways that it does this is responding to signals released from our cells. The most popular and prevalent signal being cytokines, which are tiny yet mighty messengers that govern numerous processes throughout the body, including alerting the immune system to take action or chill out. And here's how it goes down. When a cell becomes damaged, they often begin to secrete these cytokines calling the immune system to the area. Here, the immune system makes an assessment on whether it needs to, in Mortal Kombat terms, finish them or not. This is one of many protective mechanisms to address damaged or mutated cells before they turn into something more nefarious, which is good, right? However, if for whatever reason there is a constant and chronic secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, let's say for example from the hepatic cells in the liver, the immune system is chronically called to respond. And their response can often cause damage to the neighboring cells in the area, creating this vicious and continuous cycle of cytokine and immune activity, AKA chronic inflammation. Now, you may be thinking, damn, this isn't good, and you'd be correct in your assessment, but it can actually get worse. These pro-inflammatory cytokines, when abundant enough, can start circulating throughout the body and drive systemic inflammation or full body inflammation. And as the damage slowly accrues, key systems like the liver, which break down toxic compounds preventing them from damaging the rest of the body, become less efficient. Yikes is right. 
However, as always, there is some good news. Just as there are pro-inflammatory cytokines, there are anti-inflammatory ones as well. Ones which when secreted have an inflammation subduing effect. Woo, thank goodness, right? But wouldn't it be best to stop inflammation at the source? Which brings us to the all important question, what's actually driving the inflammation in the first place? Well, the real and honest answer here is, it depends. Because everybody's biological circumstances and environment are different. However, there is pretty solid data suggesting that much of this inflammatory fury often starts as a byproduct of lifestyle factors. Things such as a diet mainly composed of ultra-processed foods, 24-7 all-waking-day eating, circadian disalignment, chronic stress, the use and overuse of harsh cleaning supplies, body care items, and medications, a ultra-sedentary lifestyle, a polluted environment, and chronically deprived sleep. With the honest truth being, most people check a lot of these suboptimal lifestyle boxes. And it's only when they adjust their habits, things begin to shift in their favor, not just with inflammation, but with daily mood, feel, cognition, and physical function as well. All things that might I add are impaired by high inflammation levels. With that, let's look at one of these lifestyle interventions and how it may influence our inflammatory balance. In a new study published in the journal Advances in Clinical and Experimental Medicine, researchers explored how a daily 16-8 time-restricted feeding protocol or consuming all of their caloric energy in a eight-hour daily feeding window while fasting 16 hours a day impacted the inflammation level of 21 overweight adults aged 30 to 45. And after collecting samples at the beginning and the end of the eight-week study, they found that pro-inflammatory cytokines decreased, while anti-inflammatory cytokines increased as a likely result of the protocol. Specifically, IL-33, which is known to have a protective effect against fat-associated inflammation, concluding that daily time-restricted feeding had a positive effect on obesity-induced inflammation. Now, Although this was a rather small study, the results are rather consistent with several other human and animal models that have tracked inflammation levels as one of its outcomes. This is likely due to the cellular boosting effect that is often associated with time-restricted feeding protocols, an effect which seems to be more powerful in people who are starting in a state of lesser health, including improved mitochondria function, upregulation of cellular repair pathways, more cellular recycling, aka autophagy and mitophagy, and a metabolic shift to using more ketone bodies as fuel, ultimately enhancing cellular function and efficiency, thus reducing their likelihood of sending the SOS signal to our medic warriors. That being said, there are some cautions to be aware of, such as the observation that when performing a little bit of a longer fast, typically over 24 hours, our immune system, specifically white blood cells, begin to retreat to areas such as bone marrow leaving an individual potentially more susceptible to pathogens during this time. However, after the refeed, it has also been observed that these white blood cells return stronger and more specific. Pretty interesting, right? Once again, proving that in our biological world, it's all about context. That being said, it is important to note this is a phenomena which warrants much more research, as it's still in its infancy of understanding. And at this point, we've reached the decisive question. Is structured meal timing worth it? If you're asking the guy who has 60 plus videos on the topic all across his health and longevity channel, I'll say what I always say. It depends. It depends on your circumstance. I don't know your situation. Only you do. What I will say is, for most people, 
building structure into their daily eating and designating consistent feeding and fasting windows present a lot of upside for their cellular and metabolic function, especially if they're following the Western societal norm of consuming energy from the first 30 minutes they get up in the morning to the last 30 minutes before bed. One of the ways being, as we saw today, through its inflammation modulating effects. But remember, Structured meal timing, intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding is no silver bullet, nor is any other single intervention. If you don't take the time to observe, identify, and modify the habits which cause the dysfunction in the first place, a daily time-restricted feeding protocol isn't just going to swoop in and save the day. That being said, it happens to be a great place to start, as it doesn't consist of crazy dietary reform and total lifestyle upheaval just simply putting some parameters around when you eat, with the ideal window being during the daylight hours, or as we evolved eating. With all that, it is important to once again reiterate that true long-term health and longevity comes from a holistic shift in lifestyle habits, a shift which encompasses real whole food eating, high quality sleep, circadian alignment, daily movement, and nature while minimizing the potential toxins and pollutants in your environment. But as you know, all of this doesn't happen overnight. It happens over many nights. Thus why a slow and methodical approach sustainably adding habits over time is the true secret source to vitality over time. And simply incorporating some daily structure into your eating, aiming to consume all of your energy within a 10 hour or less window during the waking day is a pretty simple and doable onboarding that has a lot of cellular and metabolic upside with very little downside. Worth a noodle on if you ask me. And as always, you want to talk to your medical professional before making any radical changes, especially if you have any pre-existing conditions. Because we are all different. Unlike chronic inflammation, which is very much the same. That is being tightly associated to dysfunction and disease, and likely both a driver and byproduct of it. Thus, giving it the spot of longevity liability numero uno, on our vitality stealing most wanted list. So next time you need a little extra motivation to do that healthy thing, remember, owning your health each day keeps the chronic inflammation at bay. Was, was that the corniest sign off I've ever done? Yeah, that was, that was the corniest sign off ever. Okay.